today, as we read the creation story, we are reminded of beauty and order. This is the reminder we need in the midst of today's chaos with the hate and the violence that surround us. As we consider God's work in creation, we also consider where we are in our lives and in our own behavior. Are we loving or are we hating? Are we appreciative of the nature that we see around us? Can we stop and smell the roses, as they say? And how is our patience level today? Are we willing to rest in God for what we need, knowing that our Creator God is still creating all things new? Can we be patient and trust God with our future? Today we will speak of resting in God. For me, resting is a struggle. Defining rest is equally as hard. I relate more to the words of Psalm 23, Verse 2, where it says, he makes me lie down in green pasture. My life is filled with stories of forced rest, not chosen rest. I'm not proud of this, so today, do as I say, not as I do. But together, let's learn about resting in God. You know what feeds my soul when I read Genesis 1? The details. You know why? Because I'm a detail-oriented person. I appreciate detail, which is the reason I always have so many questions, following whatever someone says. Here in Genesis 1, we read at the start, God's Spirit moving over the waters. I think identifying and surveying the chaos. The first thing that happens is the removal of the chaos, replacing it with order. And then the work of creation continues. The creation of the atmosphere, the organization and separation of things, the beginning of vegetation, sea creatures, birds, animals, and finally, humanity. The more science learns of living things, the greater the understanding we have of the magnitude of God as creator. The intricate details of nature and how everything fits together is astounding. When we read, God looked at all of it and called it good. But then, on the seventh day, God rests. It's not an accident that we are told God rests. It's not because there was nothing left to do, and it's not because God needed to rest. No, God is still creating today. God saw that all he had done was good and took a pause to appreciate all the creation on the seventh day. In God's rest, we see we each have a God who appreciates a job well done. And just as God created each aspect of the world, God offers us rest from our label, labor through his example. God created rest and created us in his image, and so we rest. Sadly, we're not good at resting. Either we pursue rest to the point of laziness, or we refuse to rest to the point of exhaustion. Either way, true rest often eludes us. Of course, our time in isolation from one another seems like forced rest. So perhaps we should discover what benefits we might gain from it. This week, the words I found repeating over and over in my mind were, there was evening and there was morning the first day. What wonderful words, hopeful words, that offer us a fresh start. These are words that make us look to tomorrow, and that's a good thing. Each night when our head hits the pillow, we have a choice to make in thinking about the next day. Each new day comes with unlimited opportunity and unknown possibility for life and for love. I have a prayer that I like. It's from the Book of Common Prayer, and it's called Prayer in the Morning. It goes like this. This is another day, O oh Lord. I know not what it will bring forth, but make me ready for whatever it may be. If I am to stand up, help me to stand bravely. If I am to sit still, help me to sit quietly. If I am to lie low, help me to do it patiently. And if I am to do nothing, let me do it gallantly. 
send it to you. Like I said, it's from the Book of Common Prayer. Jesus spoke repeatedly about entering God's rest. He would take time away from his ministry and slip away to a quiet place where he would enter God's rest. By being quiet, he sought God. Through his prayer life, he knew that it was important to intentionally bring himself into God's presence for rest and restoration that he knew he needed. He encourages us to come to him to find that rest. Jesus knew that if we could and would give our burdens over to him, we can enjoy the rest he offers. And by releasing our burdens, especially the burdens we're not meant to carry, we can rest in God's comfort. In the dictionary, the definition of rest says, to cease work or movement in order to relax, refresh oneself, or recover strength. So you see, even by our definition, resting is something we do for a reason. There should be a result from our rest, a purpose for our rest. When we enter God's rest, we do so with the expectation of rest, renewal, and to be refilled with God's strength to forge ahead into evening and morning the next day. Let's consider these. First, to stop ceasing from action and motion, to enter God's rest, can mean to stop and consider your life, to take a pause, to discover you don't need to earn points with God, to be loved, or to work, to be worthy of your salvation in Jesus Christ. And so for the Christian, this can mean learning to accept God's gift of God's rest, God's gift of God's grace, to accept the refreshing. David knew and understood this when he wrote Psalm 62, 1, My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. The second definition we'll consider is to be free from whatever worries or disturbs you. Some people can't rest mentally because in their mind they're always worried by the things that might happen. They're in a constant state of worry. To rest means to be free from whatever hassles you, from whatever disturbs you, or creates worry in your mind. It means to be quiet, to be still, to be peaceful, and to be content, to be free from guilt and the things which drive us crazy. Doesn't that sound wonderful? It sounds better than worry, doesn't it? You know, you know when you can't worry? You can't worry and sing praises to God at the same time. Oh, we can multitask, but you can't worry and sing to God at the same time. In 1 Peter, we're told, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Therefore, to enter God's rest simply means to give God our cares and accept God's peace. To take Jesus at his word when he says, Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It means to possess the perfect peace that God gives, to be free from guilt. Through the act of repentance, we can be at rest in God's love and grace. No more anxiety, no more pressure, no more guilt. Just rest through peace with God. So God's rest for us includes giving our struggles to God, and it includes resting in the total forgiveness of God. Continuing, the next says, to lie down, be settled, or fixed. Remember when your parents said, sit still? I got that mostly in church on Sunday mornings. Now I struggle. I still struggle with sitting still. When I'm sitting, I feel like I should be doing something. At least my hands need to be doing something. This isolation has been very difficult for me. But this definition encourages us to settle down and be still intentionally. It's hard to meditate on God if we can't sit still. Well, so how can we do this? Well, we can learn to become quiet enough to listen we can learn to study God's word and settle into our theology and what we believe. To trust in God's holy word. Not just read it, but meditate on it and apply it to 
to our lives. To know that we are established, we are rooted, we are grounded in Christ. We are settled in our faith. We can then be unshaken by the external circumstances as we hold fast to Jesus as the rock of our salvation. This will help us to be confident and to put our trust in God. We can enter God's rest to enjoy God's security that's found in God's love. No more of the fear that consumes us. Notice I didn't say no more fear. I said no more fear that consumes us. You have trust and confidence in God's care and in God's forgiveness and in the depth of God's love for you. And most importantly, confidence in God's charge over your life. Knowing God goes before you into the evening and the morning the next day. You're resting in the thought that God is caring for you. So when we talk about entering God's rest, we realize we have work to do. It's important to have a time in our daily life to rest restore and rediscover life, not just for our physical health, but for our mental health and our spiritual health as well. Entering God's rest is holy, it's reverent, and it's done through our relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. The account of creation in Genesis teaches us so much. It teaches us that we can appreciate what we have accomplished by calling our own work good at the end of each day. And it shows us that rest is important to God. So important that God blessed the time of rest, hallowed it, and made it holy. The pause to rest in God might be exactly what we need to learn to survive the chaos of the world. The challenges and the struggles, the pain and the sorrow, and even the loneliness of each and every day. As we continue to hear news of the pandemic and reports of violence and hatred, we must not let that panic and fear take over our opportunity to enter God's rest. We need to rest in God so that we can respond as people that are filled with God. When we sing we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, we sing of entering into God's rest which is a place of unity and grace. It's a place where we join together soul to soul, even if we're not sitting next to each other in the pew. It's a place where we are like-minded with a focus on love, not hate. And where we are one with God and one with each other, where we are guided and directed for how we are to respond to what happens in this life. And we want it to be a response that's filled with God. This is how we share the gospel. This is how we respond to the Great Commission that we read in Matthew 28. God's rest is full.